Hey guys and gals, how we doing? It's me, Joe Sayers, back here again for the Music Factory Studios. I'm going to install Solus 4.3 GNOME and show you basically how you do it. It's super simple. Basically, all you have to do is use something like Belina Etcher and install the ISO to a thumb drive. Put the thumb drive in your machine. Most PCs, if you hit exit, will give you the option to choose, well, let's do this. I'll show you. Do a complete restart. Okay. Seeing a black screen at the moment. As it starts up, I'm going to hit the exit button. I'm going to go to the boot device options, function F9. And I'm going to choose my SanDisk USB stick. And then it will just start. It's that simple. Super simple, right? Solus 4.3 is the newest version of Solus. There is a Budgie version, a GNOME version, a KDE version, and a Mate version. I have lived in all of them except Mate. I don't care for Mate because I can't do reverse scrolling <laughs> with Mate, and that just drives me nuts. So that's my issue with that. So basically, what I want to do first is connect to my Wi Fi. Okay. Choose the Wi Fi network I want. Enter my Wi-Fi password. We should get a connection up here. And we're connected. Next, I want to hit this little button that says show applications. I want to start typing the word install. I'll click on install OS. And I want to walk through the installer. Now they have their own kind of interesting installer, Solus does. I think it's based on the uh, the PISI installer. So I'm going to choose English United States. My mouse is dying here. <laughs> we can choose to have it find our location automatically or choose it ourselves next. I'll just go next. US. I'm on the East Coast. Somewhere around there. <laughs> All right. Now. I'm going to erase the content on my disk completely and replace it with Solus. You can also go through and have it dual boot if you want it to do that. You can also use LVM, which is uh, logical volume management, but I don't really want to do that. Now we can give it a host name. We're just going to call it uh, Joe's PC. Now we give it a username, my real name, and your password must be at least six characters. And you're saying, why does it have to be six characters? It's part of Solus's way of doing things. I look at Solus as like the open source version of Apple. You know, they kind of like, you, you kind of need to do it this way. It's a little safer if you have a, a six character password compared to a, like most people use four because they're used to using pin numbers it's pretty simple for a lot of people just to use four numbers but in Solus they specifically make you use six I think clear Linux the Intel based Linux distribution also makes you use a certain number and I think it's eight so that's not too bad. I'm fine with that. I wish that there was an easy way to just use whatever you want to, but that's not the soulless way. It's do it soulless's way or move on to another distribution, apparently. And that's not just, I'm not trying to disparage the soulless team at all. They're awesome guys and, and gals, but come on, man. Is it really that big a deal? <laughs> And you just keep hitting install till you get to the end. It says installation will make changes to your disk. It could result in data loss. Do you wish to install? Yes, I do. So I'm going to click OK. Now, the last time I did a fresh install of Solus, it was super fast. Like, crazy fast. This is on a SATA SSD, not an NVMe M.2 or anything. So it's just your very basic SATA SSD. And... Uh, so it won't be as fast as like an NVMe install, but it should be 
super fast. As you can see, we're about 25% of the way done. And it's just flying through this install, which is awesome. Now, there's not a whole lot installed. It's just basically a very basic GNOME setup with uh, their own theming added. And it is GNOME 40, which is going to take a while to set up. It doesn't use Wayland. It uses X11. And I'm kind of curious to see what happens when, you know, X11 is pretty much dead and buried. What will Solus do? Or will they kind of come up with their own thing? I don't know. I'd like to find out. Finalizing. Flushing the buffers to disk. Removing the live configuration. And it should be done anytime now. Sometimes, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, it will stick right here. That's just how it is, you know? So, it will stick right at the end of the install. If you just wait a good five minutes or something, see on, on this Intel machine or with an AMD GPU, you don't have this problem. But with an NVIDIA GPU, sometimes it'll stick and just constantly sit there working. Just wait about five minutes and restart the machine and it should be fine. It just gets stuck because of the NVIDIA driver. So we're going to restart now. I'm going to pull the, the USB stick out of the machine. You can see how fast it reboots here. We'll do it in real time. It's pretty quick. Okay. Now, we can see that there is just the X11 session installed here. So you're not going to get the fancy, you know, multi-gesture touchpad options you get with Wayland. And it's a real basic install why the gnome team doesn't put these in alphabetical order is just insane to me i don't get it what's you know i get that you can have like you know uh, folders or whatever in this launcher but why wouldn't it be standard for these just to be put in alphabetical order every um you know application launcher that I've ever seen, except, well, I take that back. Launchpad on Mac OS doesn't do that either, unless you put them in order. But nobody really uses Launchpad on Mac OS. They usually grab their application folder, put it in the dock, and that way they can just click on it, and that's in uh, alphabetical order. <laughs> kind of insane. It just makes it harder to find things. I get that the workflow they want you to use in GNOME is... You know basically hit the super key and type what you want but what if you installed an application two weeks ago that you intended to use later and forgot the name of it it's so confusing trying to sit here and it slows down you know the 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 whole show when you're trying to to find that application all right let's see what in extensions are installed as well as we'll look at tweaks and see what uh, the theming is because there's a couple things that we need to set up properly. We already have our Wi-Fi installed, right? Or do we have to do it again? Does it have persistence? Nope. No persistence in the Wi-Fi. That I don't think they've ever had persistence in the Wi-Fi. So when you're setting up Solus and you type in your Wi-Fi password, after you install it, you're going to have to do it again. So that's that's kind of a pain, but once it's done, it's done. Okay. I'll go down here to the power option. I'll set this to never. Because nothing drives me nuts more than my computer shutting off because I get busy doing something else and then I come back to it. Okay. Mouse and touchpad, I gotta have reverse scrolling. Without reverse scrolling, I'm just kind of useless. Date and time. I don't like 24 hours. I like AM, PM. That just makes it easier. Okay. And uh, you can do automatic date and time as long as it stays correct. But if you don't want the OS connecting to the internet to find out what time it is, you could leave this off. But it's fine with me. Okay. 
Here is basically the device I just installed it on. It's an i3-7100 dual core with hyper threading. Okay. And it has 16 gigs of RAM. It's a little four core or two core plus hyper threading. I3 works perfectly fine. It's got a 480 gigabyte SATA SSD. And this is GNOME 42.0. It's running on X11. And the theme is Materia Dark. You could also go to the very basic Edwida. But it's, you know, it's up to you. You can install themes from the Solus uh, Software Center. That's easy enough to do. But I'm fine with Materia Dark for now. We're going to look at what is installed. There's the application menu, which is installed on every GNOME distribution. And you can turn that on and have a nice little application menu here. Also, if you're going to open the application menu to have it on your taskbar, a good option is to have places next to it. That way you don't have to hit the super key and then open the file manager. You can just click up here on places and go to home and have almost like a GNOME 2 workflow. Another thing we want to do is click on preferences, go to behavior. If you like double click instead of single click, you can enable that here. That's really, really handy to have, okay? Um, also, let's see here. Where is it at? Is it here? Yeah, here. I like to have uh, a little bit larger icons just because it's easier for me to see because I'm blind as a bat. If you haven't been watching the channel, now you know I'm blind as a bat. <laughs> Impatience is installed. Impatience makes animations move faster. So I personally think the GNOME animations are just about right. Some people like them to be really fast or instantaneous like that. I don't. It makes me feel like my computer's jittery. So I usually run it about one and a half. And now I have these nice smooth animations. Now the reason that is looking kind of jittery is my guess is where is the native window placement. So you can set impatience however you like it. That feels pretty good. So I don't really need impatience. The older versions, the, the 30 versions of GNOME, like GNOME 30 and up to 39, or whatever it was, 38, the animations were still a little weird, so I would run impatience at around one and a half, but it's fine to run it. For me now, this feels about the same as how I ran it. So that's awesome. The other things that are installed are like your very basic ones that come with GNOME, like the Windows list. I don't know anybody that uses that, to be honest with you. User themes. You got a workspace indicator if you want that up here. There's a, a screenshot window resizer. Don't really need that. Um, there's the auto move windows and launch new instance. Those are the extensions that are installed which is perfectly fine. Now, let's open the Solus Software Center real quick. And one of the cool things about being on Solus is it's not as huge as the Arch user repository or Arch's, you know, uh, the available software on Arch. But what is in the Solus Software Center will absolutely work with Solus perfectly fine. Also, every Friday, there are updates and those updates you can update if you want to if not you don't have to okay why did you ask me for that twice did i mistype that probably <laughs> but the updates are there for you every friday and it's been that way since the beginning of solus you can you know, 
set your watch to it that Friday all of your updates are, will come and that's great because most people if you're using a Solus machine for work let's say most people work five days a week so here's the my, my thought and the reasoning why I think it was chosen to to work this way most people work Monday through Friday and they do their updates on Friday so if you were ever to run into an issue you have Saturday and Sunday to try to figure out what happened and how to fix it so you're not getting constant updates like arch that's the only downside to arch and I know you don't have to update as soon as it happens okay but for new users especially using distros like oh I don't know Manjaro Garuda and, and some of the more popular arch distributions they may feel as though they have to do that <laughs> and it puts you into this cycle of update 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 every time you you know turn on your machine you're updating again but in Solus, it happens one day a week and usually the updates are rock solid man that's just a given now some of the things I like to do for a new distribution that's based on GNOME is to I turn off over amplification because I'm using an audio interface and I turn off the activities hot corner now I'm gonna close this because we have done our updates okay I'm gonna close this and do a quick restart so all the updates are installed and the thing about having those updates on Friday and I'll end with this about updates is it just makes it a whole lot easier on you as the end user you know that you can work all week with a rock-solid machine and see I've, I've got so used to using a pin password that even it catches me sometimes not doing the the six character password but the uh, the thing about the updates is you have got a rock solid machine all week and on Friday your update comes you update I've only ever had Solus break twice and once was on the when KDE plasma was in beta it broke on me and then another time it just I had had my machine running Solus for I want to think about a year and a half or so and it just one update broke it but it was an older machine running a an AMD bulldozer CPU and it just it was a constant fight with that machine anyway no matter what OS was on it so there is the Solus Software Center we were going to talk about and uh, one of the cool things you can do with the Software Center is desktop theming so you can go into desktop theming and install any of these themes you prefer so if you like this adaptive theme you can install it and here's the best part I just gave it my password right well for I'm not sure exactly what the time frame is but for a certain period of time the software center stays in pseudo mode okay so you can keep installing a few things that you really want so I wanted the arc theme um, let's see I like this Kanta theme and see it's not asking me for my password again I can keep doing this for a for a little while until it does ask me for my password I install the deepen icons just so I can have the deepen mouse which is kind of handy um, there's just a few different awesome options now if you switch to a different uh, category in the software center then it will probably ask you for your password again there's also the Evo pop I wish they would make a dark version of this Evo pop I don't know why this was supposed to be the Solus theme this Evo pop theme and it just kind of got abandoned there's no dark version of it and it would look awesome if it was if there was a dark version of this I'm just gonna rant on this for a second so if if we were talking about themes look at this this theme looks really really nice okay there is see how this would look dark I mean wouldn't that look nice that would just be a really nice theme 
It's the Evil Pop Azure theme. And it just, I think it would be really good for the Solus team to just make a dark theme of Evo Pop and move to that because it looks really good. And from what I understand, you know, this was supposed to be the default Solus theme that was built for Solus. It looks good. And, you know, I think it looks great, to be honest with you. There are some um, other themes in here you can install, like the Mojave theme, which is kind of like a Mac OS kind of thing. But not having a dark version of the Evo Pop theme, man, that just that sucks because it's so great. I like these icons myself. And you notice that all the downloads are super duper fast, and I'm not on the fastest Wi-Fi. Okay, I have pretty slow Wi-Fi to be honest with you, and it just it. It, I have no problems with downloads. Now, the one thing about desktop theming is you may run into some issues like we installed the Kanta theme, but we only have the Kanta light themes. <laughs> so where's the Kanta dark? Sometimes you have to just go in here and search for those themes and you'll find the uh, darker version. Okay. So here's the dark version. We're going to install it. Install the dark compact. And, you know, it's there now in Tweaks. I'm going to put Tweaks in my dock, by the way, for now. Close that. Activities. Oh, no, it didn't stay. I may have missed that. Let's add that to favorites here. And now we can use the Canta Dark theme which looks really nice. I gotta switch my buttons to the left here. It won't do it until I've restarted the machine, most likely. Now, the way I set mine up is because I've used Mac OS for so long, double-clicking the title bar, I don't like that to maximize. That's just me. I'd rather it be middle-click to maximize, and double-clicking the title bar will minimize the application. That's the way I like to work, so it's up to you what you like. Use what you like. And, uh, you know, that's one of the great things about Solus and Gnome itself is you do have those options. Oh, yeah, we were also going to change our icons to where are they at? Did they not install? Did I miss them? I must have missed them. <laughs> must have missed those icons where are they at uh, dun, dun, dun. let's see here ah uh, here we go okay I must need to close and reopen appearance and icons and oh I clicked on the wrong thing my bad I just like these icons here I think they look good there's also the Evo Pop icons. I don't know if I installed them just now. I didn't. So let's do that. Because these are missing buttons. I probably need to install the rest of the icon theme. Oh no, it's installed. Huh. Interesting. That it would come without those. But the Evo Pop icon theme also looks pretty good too. Here's the icon theme. Well, it's here. Where's it at? Did I miss it? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Today is just not my day, apparently. See, we're missing buttons. I'm not a fan of that. that that's annoying. These icons look pretty good. Um, but without, you know, without the uh, buttons, it can be really, really annoying. So, my backup is always the arc icon theme. Now, you see the persistence of having sudo stay open or whatever it's using here. After a certain period of time, it asks you to give your password again to install something from the software center. So that's handy. This has been Solus. Check it out. It's a great, great Linux distribution. And, uh, you know, 
Budgie's great if you like Budgie. The Mate version is is rock solid and it has Solus's special menu. But you can't do reverse scrolling very easy, so if you're used to that, you know, natural style telephone scrolling, it's gonna be a pain to use a regular mouse with Mate. If you got a touchpad, it works perfectly fine. I don't know why they don't just add the option. It's insane to me. The KDE version is cool too as well. I just prefer GNOME's workflow. That's me. Uh, but, you know, use what you like. And if you're looking for a good suggestion for a great distribution that gives you very up-to-date packages, very new packages, but isn't you know prone to breakage and things of that nature try solus it's pretty rock solid and you know everything you will want will be there as far as you know third party applications there's a third party app button here and you can install things such as you know bitwig studio or uh, google chrome or you know uh, ocean audio skype spotify you know these aren't curated by the solus team but they're there for those people that want those think of this as like the small version of the aur that is really 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 rock solid and built for solus and then you have your regular applications that you can install and the things you may need under a really nice category system as you can see here you've got gaming internet software um, you know, any browser you could pretty much think of is here. Brave, Firefox, uh, Falcon, Vivaldi, you know, Opera, all of the, the very uh, normal web browsers. So if you use one of those web browsers on your other, you know, machine, whether it be a Mac or a PC, you know, if you're an Opera person, you can have Opera installed on Solus. If you're a, a Vivaldi person like me, you can have Vivaldi installed or you're a brave person you can do that or if god forbid you're a google chrome person you can have google chrome installed but this has been solus check it out solus 4.3 is out now and uh i think you'll enjoy it if you're looking to switch to linux this is probably the distribution i would suggest for most people because of the the small amount of uh or not small amount but the the very uh good and curated software that's in their software center it makes it easy to figure out how to do updates once a week how to uh and it all happens in the software center as you saw and you know the the application choices are everything that is super popular on linux is here in solus all right guys and gals we'll see you next time have a great day y'all